Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I hope you're having a wonderful year. I hope you're making progress to goals that you set for yourself. We're about halfway through the year now. And I hope you're reaching forward to something. I hope you're looking towards mountains and measuring them up and saying to yourself, yes, I will conquer that mountain. I will conquer that mountain this year. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to make some moves. I'm going to make some progress. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to work with God and accomplish something this year. I'm going to make some changes. I know that I've been making uh, strides and making leaps and bounds towards goals I've set for myself and things that have been uh, set aside and put away in the closet and Things that I haven't chased after, but made up my mind just this year. I've got to work overtime and double time to go after some things that the Lord has laid on my heart. And I want to conquer some mountains. And I hope you want to conquer mountains too. I've got a quick thought on my mind. And I haven't fleshed it out yet, but we're going to do that here together. And we're going to have this conversation, but this thought has been on my mind Sharing the Lord's joy. Sharing in the Lord's joy. God has so much joy for his children. When he looks down and sees us, and he sees us moving towards him and moving after him, that's what moves the heart of God. I know that when my own daughters are being bad, behaving poorly and not listening and not behaving the way that I wish they would or desire them to or striving my hardest to help them. And they're not behaving the way that um, I would like when they decide to just show some love and show some kisses, and show some hugs, and just ask me to play with them, ask me to chase them, ask me to tickle them, whatever it is, there's an overflowing joy that a father has for his children. Just when they turn from whatever they're doing or however they're acting, however they are acting out, when they just turn aside from whatever they're doing and they go after their father, there's an overflowing joy. And I believe it's the same way with our father that whatever we're pursuing in this life, whatever we're after in this life, whatever has our attention or has uh, gripped us, whatever's weighing us down, whatever makes us cry or whatever makes us frustrated, when we begin to lay those things aside and just return our attention back to our father, there's an overflowing joy that he feels and that he wants to pour out upon us. The Bible said that with joy shall you draw waters out of the well of salvation. With joy shall you draw waters out of the spirit of Jesus Christ. That joy, this overflowing joy that's there. And we want to share in the joy of the Lord. Not only do we want to share and spread the joy of the Lord, but we want to share in with the joy that he has. In Zephaniah chapter three and verse 17 says, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. That God can look at me and see my life and see what I've been through. And he can look at me and see where he's brought me from and what he's brought me out of and see who I was and the mess that I was and the mess that I was in and the man that I was or the boy and the child that I was, the immature man that I was, but he's begin to mold me and shape me and to create something new in me, to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And he can look at me 
and have a joy that he's able to rejoice over us with joy, that he's able to look at your life and see who you were, the damage that you caused, the hurt that you caused, the destruction that you caused in your own life and your own family, your own relationships, the things that you, you brought the opposite of joy. You brought depression and destruction and hopelessness and those things followed you. And maybe some things weren't your fault, but God has brought you out of a place of hopelessness and God has brought you out of a place of depression or feeling oppressed and out of a place where you didn't feel like you had a hope or a future. But when God chases you down and you allow him, you turn aside from wherever you are, you repent, you return from the direction that you're going and you turn your face towards him. And when he sees your face and he sees your eyes looking up upon him, calling out to him, reaching up to him, stretching out your hands and lifting your voice to him, the love of your father begins to pour out upon you and he rejoices over you with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over you with singing. I don't know what song Jesus would sing about you or about me. But when we get to heaven, we have all eternity to know and to hear him sing and to hear him rejoice and to know what his thoughts were towards us. We have all eternity for him to sit with us one-on-one -on -one and begin to discuss every moment that he remembers rejoicing over us. But what song would God sing in joy over us? That's amazing to me that the Lord would sing over my life, that the Lord would sing over your life, that he's so enamored and so in love with you and with me that he would sing over us with great, great joy. But we want to share in that love. I know he has joy. I know he's rejoicing and that, that's amazing to me. But what does it mean to share in that joy that he has? Then drew near unto him, we're speaking of Jesus now, all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. They came near to Jesus. Publicans were despised of the Jews because they were looked on as traitors. Here are the Romans. They've come and they've invaded our homes. They've invaded our territory. They've invaded us. <clears throat> and now they made us to be strangers in our own homeland. And we are not the rulers of our own home, the place that God has given us to be our home forever. We're not even welcome there. And now our own people have gone on to work for the empire. And those are the publicans and tax collectors, people that work for the empire as middlemen between the Jews and the Romans. And so they were seen as traitors and sinners came to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying, this man receives sinners and he eats with them. He continues to receive them and he continues to eat with them. Why would he stoop so low? Why would a great master, a great teacher, a great rabbi, why would a great Jewish man stoop so low to allow himself to be accompanied by publicans and sinners. And Jesus spake this parable unto them saying, what man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them doth not leave the 90 and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. Which of you would not? Which of you would not look at this one sheep and understand what it means to you, understand its value to you, that you would leave the 99 that are safe. <clears throat> leave the 99 that are safe and go chase after this one that is lost until he finds it. No matter what the cost would be, no matter what the danger or peril would be to your own life, no matter what the risk would be, you would go and you would search until you find it. 
And when he hath found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, rejoicing. Not when he gets home is he rejoicing, not when it's safe is he rejoicing, but when he finds it and he lays it on his own shoulders, at that moment, he begins to rejoice. At that moment, I can see a man that's lost his sheep and he places it on his shoulders and all the way home, he's skipping and jumping and he's singing over this lost sheep that he's found in the wilderness and he goes and he's rejoicing all the way home carrying this lost sheep not worried about the struggle of how heavy it is not worried about how burdensome it is and what uh what strenuous activity and work it is to carry this sheep all the way home but he is rejoicing the bible said that jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, counted the shame as absolutely valueless. It, it held, it, it, it meant nothing in comparison to the joy that he knew lie ahead. He knew that there was joy coming. He knew that the sacrifice that he was making was going to bring forth joy. And so he went to the cross. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors. And he says unto them, rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. He says, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. The Lord himself, I believe, invites angels to rejoice with him. Rejoice with me. Come feel the joy. Come share in the joy that I have. Come participate in the joy that I have. Come come be a part of the joy that I have. Come feel this joy with me. Rejoice with me. Celebrate with me. Shed tears of joy with me. Join in this singing and celebration with me for I have found my sheep which was lost. Then he goes on to say, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. She will not give up, but she knows the value. I'm going to sweep the house. I'm going to look over under the couches. I'm going to lift up every rug. I'm going to look in every closet, in every corner, in every shoe, in every bag. I'm looking, I'm moving the fridge. I'm moving the stove. I'm moving the oven. I'm going out into the garage. I'm looking through the house. I'm looking through everything that I possibly can. I'm looking in every nook and every cranny and everywhere that it could possibly be. And I'm going to check three, four, five, seven times and not sleep until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. And now this woman says, rejoice with me. And let's say this woman, let's call her the church. The church says, calls neighbors and friends and says, rejoice with me. Rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost, that that." One who backslid and turned away, the one who went cold, the one who was offended, the one who moved outside of the house of the Lord, the one who was lost inside of the house, the one that was no longer on fire for God, no longer coming down to the altars and shedding tears. Come rejoice with me for I have found that one in the house. I have found the one that I lost. Rejoice with me. Let's share in the joy of the Lord. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Lift up the 
the hands that hang low, weep with them that weep, but join in with joy when it's time to joy. Dance with joy when it's time to dance with joy. Sing with joy when it's time to celebrate that what was lost is now found. And the Lord says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. There is joy in the presence of angels. Not, is, not only is there joy within the angels, not, in, not only are the angels rejoicing, not only are the angels feeling joy, but in the presence of angels, there is joy. In the presence of the angels of God, in the midst of the angels, where the angels are located, these ministering spirits that are sent forth to be ministers unto them who shall be the heirs of salvation. This, these ministering spirits, these angels of God among them, where they are in their presence, there is fullness of a rejoicing God. It's not just the angel's joy, but it's the joy of the Lord who is celebrating. Exodus chapter 37 and verse 6. According to God's commandment, Moses began to build the Ark of the Covenant, and he made the mercy seat of pure gold in the holy place, in the holiest of holies. He made a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims or angels of gold beaten out of one piece made he them and two en- on the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub on the one end on this side and one cherub on the other end on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof and the cherubim spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seatward were the faces of the cherubims. The mercy seat is also referred to as the seat of judgment, but this place represents the presence of God, the throne of God, the seat that only belongs to God. Only he alone is allowed, permitted, worthy to judge us. And mercy belongs to him and to him alone. Vengeance is his and his alone. And he asks us to be merciful like he is merciful. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. God desires us to be merciful. And he alone is the one that's worthy to sit on this seat of mercy because he alone is the only one that's just and fair and righteous in all of his judgment. And his seat is this seat of judgment. And on the right hand side and on the left hand side were angels facing one another and they spread their, ink, they spread their wings high and they spread their wings forward to cover the mercy seat. The Bible says that There's great joy over one sinner that repenteth. When you come and you repent and you ask God to forgive you and ask God to cleanse you from the inside out, Lord, do a great work in my heart. Cleanse my heart. Lord, I know you're convicting me. I know you're teaching me something and you're asking me something and you're working and moving on me. But Lord, I'm coming to repent. I'm coming to the mercy seat because I know that I slipped and I've fallen. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've sinned against you and you alone. I know that I've hurt somebody. I know that I've wronged my neighbor or my brother. I know that I've sinned against you, Lord, but I'm coming to this place of repentance and I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive and to be merciful. And God sits on that mercy seat and over one sinner that repents, there is great joy on that mercy seat. It's not just the the angels are rejoicing. It's not just the cherubims that are on either side of this mercy seat that are being joyful 
and rejoicing, but the Lord, he begins to rejoice. When you come to him and you ask for forgiveness and he grants you that mercy, there's great joy in the presence of angels. What is in the presence of angels? What is between the cherubims? The Lord that sits on the mercy seat, the Lord that sits on the seat of judgment. He is the one that grants you and gives you mercy. And he is the one that is rejoicing over you with great joy. He is the one that is resting in his love and he is the the one that is rejoicing over you with great singing. Thank you, Jesus, that we can share in your joy. Thank you, Jesus, that angels are in your presence hearing you sing with great joy, that the angels are in your presence seeing your great glory pour out in joy, rejoicing, love, and mercy. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. Speaking of the Holy Ghost and what it is to believe in God. And, and when we receive the Holy Ghost, this is the ultimate uh, manifestation of this joy within us. He says, whom having not seen, you love. In whom though now you see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that is ultimately manifested when the presence of God moves upon us, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that God fills us with his own spirit. The spirit of Christ infills the believer. We receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and we begin to cry out and call out. And we begin to speak in tongues as the spirit gives us the utterance and God fills us with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And there's no greater joy that you feel than when you feel the love and the mercy of God and he fills you, the great God of glory fills your own spirit with his spirit. And he becomes, and he indwells the believer. He says, uh, the world cannot receive him. It doesn't know him. It's not looking for him but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. And he promised to pour out his spirit and it's his desire to pour out his spirit. When we repent and we obey God, we are uh, setting ourselves up and allowing ourselves to be poured into by the spirit of God. And when he pours into us, there's no greater feeling. There's no greater joy. Peter says it's joy unspeakable. That's why we just, we cry out and we call out. And it's, it's that utterance that comes out of us. It's unspeakable joy and it's full of glory and it's shouts and it's hallelujahs and it's glories and it's thank you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. And it's jumping and it's running and it's dancing and it's leaping and it's singing and it's crying and it's laughing and it's joy that just begins to pour out of you. But my contention is this, is it just, is it just joy that we feel because we feel the forgiveness of God? Is it just joy that we feel because we felt mercy and we felt love? Or is it just Jesus sharing the joy that he feels in his own spirit with us? I believe that when the when we're filled with the Holy Ghost and we feel that joy it's the the joy of God is being shared with us. When we feel that joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, it's the same joy that God feels and he's sharing that feeling with us. There's when when we feel so great and so so full of glory and so full of love and so full of mercy. And we so feel so full of victory and there's nothing like it in all the world that we could ever experience. There's nothing like it. And we feel that joy. It is the spirit of God sharing with us the exact feeling that he feels when we come to him in repentance, when we run to him at the mercy seat. And we lay down 
every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. And we run this race with patience. We run towards him. The joy that he feels as a father is be he begins to express in us through the Holy Ghost and we feel that joy. Unspeakable joy that is full of glory. He rejoices us or rejoices over us with singing. That's how we know how much love he has for us. The feeling that the overwhelming joy that he shares with us to know that he loves me that much. What a beautiful, mighty, wonderful God.